From the beginning, tankers had to put up with almost unbearable hardship. They traded hell in the muddy trenches for hell in a veritable tin can, exposed to noxious exhaust and extreme heat. They could travel just four miles per hour and were notoriously unreliable, frequently breaking down, getting stuck in ditches and sinking in the mud. Despite all of the tank's shortcomings, most commanders recognized the huge potential of this weapon by the end of the war. Almost a century later, the Abrams is the latest in a long line of tanks. And like every tank before it, the Abrams runs on Caterpillar tracks. These linked metal coils weigh 5,000 pounds each, transforming armored fortresses like the Abrams into all-terrain vehicles. You don't have to worry about having like a flat tire, nothing like that. Track will just go over whatever bumps, whatever ditches, whatever little hills you have, and then uh, just continue moving. We just roll on track, we don't roll on the ground. The M1A1's track is made up of 75 interlocking units. Over 300 specially designed rubber pads grip the ground, displacing the tank's enormous mass over an area of 14,000 square inches. The teeth of the main sprocket pull the tank around 14 metal wheels. The track and wheels enable the tank to cross ditches nine feet wide. Traction from the rubber pads enables the tank to accelerate and stop its 68-ton frame in a matter of seconds. Multiple wheels smooth out the ride. The bigger area for you to actually drive on, instead of having just one tire or two tires moving and moving the vehicle in just one spot, we have a whole length of track that we're actually rolling over. It's a lot easier to grip the ground and move around. Mounted on two independent track systems, the Abrams can spin in place while keeping a target in its sights. But the track is also one of the parts most likely to break. The average Abrams is 12 years old, and all of them spend their fair share of time in the maintenance bay. Considering the punishment they take, the Abrams is remarkably resilient. 5,000 of the 9,000 tanks ever built are still in service today. At 29 Palms, crews perform everything from regular maintenance to complete overhauls. In the dust and heat of the desert, the track needs almost constant upkeep. These two coils of steel and rubber tread have to support more than 34 tons of tank apiece. Tracks are rarely thrown away. This one will be refitted with new connectors and pads. Maintenance here pays off in the field, where it really matters. There's no specifics to how long it will last or will not last, but for the most part, is how well you treat it, it treats you. ORF-1, we, uh, we did a lot of driving on the roads. There's a lot of highway driving, which uh, the track is not really designed to go on highways. It's more cross-country. And uh, we pretty much wore down all the track pads. And uh, if we wouldn't have been uh, keeping good maintenance with the track, checking a lot, good track tension, we would have probably never made it. We'd have been blown out track halfway up in Baghdad or on the way back down before we were coming home. No matter where they are, each member of the crew is responsible for keeping up his section of the machine. The maintenance is, is a constant being a tanker. You need to keep your tank in a combat-ready status, whether it's from loader keeping the turret right or from the driver keeping the hole in a right, ready status. It's basically, it's constant work. In the field, the crew has to find quick fixes to keep their tanks going. On base, when more serious problems crop up, they turn to the experts. The battalion's mechanical specialists are responsible for getting broken tanks back out on the range. I'm battalion maintenance here in H&S Company, 1st Tank Battalion. Tankers go out, you know, they get in a little fight or they just start rolling. 
you know, things might go wrong, things will break, and that's where we come in. You know, whether it's electrical or mechanical or, you know, depending on what the job is, that's what we do. Okay. You know, most of the time we can get her done real quick, but sometimes she's just one of those tanks that doesn't want to be fixed. One of the main advantages of the Abrams is the ease with which it can be maintained. The tank has a fully modular design, meaning that nearly every part can be taken out and replaced individually. This includes the M1A1's power pack. Its heart is a turbine engine. Modified from the Cobra helicopter's engine, it uses the same fuel as jet fighters. Rugged and reliable, it has air filters to handle dust and dirt. Exhaust temperatures can reach 1,100 degrees, allowing tank crews to cook their meals on the engine casing. With 1,500 horsepower, four forward gears, and two reverse, it accelerates from zero to 20 miles per hour in just seven seconds. And when it does need work, crews can switch out an entire power pack in as little as an hour. This right here is an M1A1 tank engine. It's not your grandmother's conventional 64 Chevy Impala. Right here is a turbine engine, which pretty much means that it's an aircraft engine. We need a lot of power because we need to move this 68-ton vehicle over here. The engine includes a governor that keeps the speed under 45 miles per hour. Without it, the engine's colossal power could propel the tank at speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour, tearing the drivetrain apart. Even with a governor, the Abrams is one of the fastest tanks ever built. It can go 25 miles per hour in reverse, almost as fast as most World War II tanks could go forward. Even in soft sand and mud, the Abrams reaches speeds of 30 miles per hour. Few barriers hinder the Abrams, which can climb a 60% grade. And in wartime, when fuel is hard to find, the Abrams tank can burn almost anything combustible. That includes any grade of gasoline, kerosene, or even alcohol. Quieter than most other tanks, the Abrams still guzzles fuel, getting less than one mile per gallon. With a 500-gallon fuel tank, the Abrams can go for roughly 290 miles before having to refuel. This speed and range have proven key in war. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, the Marines of Delta Company led the charge to Baghdad. Meeting heavy resistance, they fought their way north. Within days, they had traveled so fast, they were in danger of outrunning their supply line. It takes almost five support trucks and 20 extra people to keep an Abrams platoon fueled and moving forward. While the machines held up, long days and nights put heavy strain on crews that had to stay on guard constantly. It was a grueling race, one that pushed crews to their limits. Long as that you can sit in the tank, how long do they need you in the tank? That's pretty much as long as you'll be in it. We used to have 24-hour posts where you stay up 24 hours just sitting and scanning. During OIF-1, we did a road march where I believe it was 12 days as a driver. I got catnaps for maybe about an hour to two hours a day and just kept on driving. Nothing can recreate the experience of battle, but stateside, the Marines try to prepare their crews for every sort of combat situation.